What's up, nerds? It's AJ from Video Game Time Machine. Welcome to The Pull. It's a new show we're doing. We're going over all the new comic books that came out this week. We're going to let you know which ones you should read, which ones you should skip. All right, let's get down to the books. All right, first book on the docket. All new Captain America number four by Rick Remender and Stuart... I'm moaning. Sorry, bro. The entire run Rick Remender's kind of based his story around fatherhood. There's been this real ongoing theme of uh, father-son, how the father imprints on the son. This issue is where it kind of all comes together. This is kind of the clarifying of that entire theme. Sam Wilson's Captain America battling to stop Hydra from sterilizing the entire world and so they can basically be the only people fucking helping out babies. Nothing but Hydra babies. Hell uterus. It starts on a really interesting note. They have Sam Wilson who's achieved more than any other human being in the world. He's saved the world. He's fucking Captain America. And yet he's lamenting. He's regretful. He's talking about how at this point in his life he thought he'd have a family by now. He thought he'd have children. And then this theme goes on through the entire issue. It's about him battling basically for his own potential fatherhood. The world's threatened in comic books all the time. The world's always ending. It becomes trite and it becomes unimpactful. This doesn't matter anymore. But when the bad guys are threatening to take away your family, it makes for a really touching yet very terrifying issue. All right, well that was a fucking downer. Let's see what else we got. Let's look at some small print stuff. What do you say? Okay, we got American Dark Age number one written by Jean Michael. John, or I don't know if you're French or Jean or it could be a check out. And drawn by Jacqueline Taylor. God, this book's French as f Anywho, it's a smaller print book. It's printed by someone called Mega Brain Comics. It starts off with this chick um, dressed in armor and a sword, uh, disemboweling someone on the top of George Clooney's house. Yeah, <laughs> comic books. It teases you with that, but does something that a lot of small print books don't do. A lot of small print books are like super, super excited to get to all the interesting sci-fi stuff the writers thought up with. Not this one. It teases you with it, and then it goes back and spends the rest of the issue focusing on character stuff. I guess the main setup is at some play at some point this giant blackout happened and it sent the entire world into a second dark age. So we go back and it turns out this chick used to be a punk rocker and it goes into her, her relationship with her dad and her relationship with her own independence and it actually does really interesting character work. So when it presents all these cool sci-fi elements, we have context. We care about Xena, the warrior goth. It's cheap, I think it's only a buck. Uh, definitely go check it out. American Dark Ages, got a red and black cover. Avengers World, and the 400th person to write Avengers World, Jack J. Barbre, and art by, ho, oh, that's a name, Marco Cicchetto, Cicchetto. Anywho, this is really kind of an origin story for the love of Smasher and Sunspot. It's Sunspot chases Smasher through space for love. There's a baby, it's all right. Okay, on to a series I've actually been enjoying quite a bit. It's called Bitch Planet, printed up by Image, written by the fabulous Kelly Sue DeConnick, art by Robert Wilson IV. Hey, uh, when I can say, woo! Anywho, I've really been enjoying this book. It's kind of a cool little pulpy science fiction sort of thing. Been a lot about women's issues, women's role in marriages, women's role in society. Been usually smart and really delivered. You can tell by the way I've talked about these other books, I really appreciate when a book is trying to say something. I just like when it's said with a little bit of subtlety. The idea or the message of your work, it can't be the cookie. It has to be the chocolate chips in the cookie. DeConnick is so good and so charming in her writing, she gets away with it a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep reading it, but it needs to start delivering its message with a little more tact. All right, we got Drifter number four by Ivan Brandon and Nick Klein. Hey, another artist I can say their name for. Hot damn. If you haven't been reading Drifter, you're missing out on a pretty cool little book. It's part space western, part lost in space, part space noir. It takes place in space. Ship crashes, lands on this planet. It's basically this Wild West boomtown, and every single issue it gets nutser. One issue, it's about basically a killer goat made of lightning. Another issue is about mining worm poop, and then there's psycho zombies that also mine the worm poop, but if you stay out of their way, they're not quite so psycho zombie, but if you get in their way, they crush your hands. Again, it's comic books, guys. This is just more Drifter goodness. Anyone who wants to write science fiction, I would point them at Drifter. Because it's really a clinic on how to present a science fiction world. It's not afraid of mystery and it doesn't talk down to its readers. It keeps this incredible feeling of intrigue. We are just as lost and confused as this wandering space traveler. Fucking good. Alright, Eternal, written by William Harms and art by Giovanni Valletta. I think I got that one. What if you could never really die? What if when you died, your consciousness was basically transported to an exact clone of yourself? What would human beings do if they were no longer threatened by the idea of death? Well, it turns out they totally act like knobs, which is what they do anytime they're presented with an idea. Kids have suicide parties, people just act recklessly when there's no cost to dying. 
people fucking die a lot. It's a cool idea, but it kind of devolves into cliche science fiction really quick. There's a resistance because the government is being jerks, because that's what governments do, I guess. Even when there's robots and stuff. There's a resistance, there's a plucky female hero here to save us all. Well, they're being mean to the non-genetically advanced humans, the pures. And that's a weird thing about science fiction, when all of a sudden we're devolving into science is bad, science has made us evil, so the simpler, the more inferior, are the more pure or the more righteous. It's weird, it's kind of the opposite of what science fiction is supposed to be about. You know, science fiction is supposed to be about expanding your mind, it's supposed to be about challenging you, making you feel uncomfortable, yet so many stories fall into this idea where the pure or simple are the good and the science is the evil. It's an odd veiled message that is sort of cancerous throughout a lot of science fiction. Now science fiction's job isn't to make you feel comfortable, not to tell you that you're good enough. It's to come into your bed at night and flip it over and say, hey, don't be sleeping you dick, get up and think about stuff. Uh, issue number two continues a lot of the same problems the first issue had. It's pushing forward all the cheap cliche resistance stuff and bearing all the interesting hard to answer questions. The book has an interesting enough world, and the characters are intriguing enough that I'm going to keep reading it, but, um, get your shit together, yo. Next book! I apologize for mispronouncing everyone's names. So, um, Iron Fist, Living Weapon, number nine, Carrie Andrew, Andrews? Carrie Ad? Why you got so many A's, bro? I think the most jagged transition in all comic books is Matt Fraction to everyone else. The Matt Fraction Iron Fist was kind of this cool, almost 70s-esque kung fu spy caper thing. Iron Fist's living weapon is fucking bleak. It's dour and dark, but it's been really interesting and it has my favorite art from the past year in all comic books. You really don't see many, many books anymore, especially in the main two publishers that are written and drawn by the same guy, but this has such a clarity of vision. It has been dour and depressing and overly dramatic in the past, and it totally continues that, but it sells it so sincerely that you can't help but fall in love. The series has been really underappreciated. They're doing a lot of really cool things here. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's the best book ever, but it's definitely worth reading. Rumble's a cool book. It's got this weird sort of you know, Johonan Vasquez art style to it. It's this dark fantasy mixed with modern day, mixed with a teenager who just doesn't, just kind of wants to work at the bar, but he keeps getting dragged into all these weird sort of blood feuds between demons and immortals thing. It's... <sighs> It sounds stupid, and it is extremely stupid, but it's really, really well executed, really great writing, really great art, a lot of charm. Check it out. Another small print book, uh, written and drawn by Richard Kemp, A Curious Machine, more like A Curious Case of Benjamin Butthole. It's got the, uh, it's got a 12-year-old's idea, cool, um, weird robot dude with two guns wearing a suit with a red hood, shooting demon slave babies that actually are octopuses it's you know that old cliche we got silk number one written by robbie thompson and drawn by stacy lee uh, silk and spider gwen were sort of the breakout stars of this spider verse event book that the never dying dan slot has been writing and i totally got this the spider gwen character that was cool i understand why she's so popular the silk i it's just not different enough from spider-man origin is the same the quips are the same the powers are not the same, but not different enough for me to give a shit. Oh, just, I, my powers are hard to control, and I'm not very good at this yet, but I'm a smartass. And also, J. Johanna Jameson's kind of being mean to me, but he's also a cool boss. It, the whole thing is just brand new day with a vagina. I mean, it's the first issue. This is a new character. She still has plenty of time, and she's going to define who she is. But right now, she's just not interesting yet. Secret Identities, number one, written by Jay Faber and Brian Brian Jehones. I think that's how I said it. Secret Identities was one of those books where I read the press on it, saw it was coming out, and just like, oh shit, I gotta read this review. I really think that Invincible was the last time the superhero story is gonna work. I'm sorry. It's played out. Comic books, there's there's so much more interesting stuff going on in comic books. I hate to see people going back to the superhero well all the fucking time. What if the only thing that was on TV was soap operas? Get fucking sick of that shit, right? But God damn it, fucking pull it off. Son of a bitch. It totally started out with why should I care? Superheroes are fighting bad guys. Bad guys are being bad guys. Superheroes are being superheroes. These characters are interesting. They're fleshed out. They're not just flawed. They're broken. 
And the, and the stuff they have going on behind the mask is really great A quality storytelling, and I'm super excited to see what comes next. All right, a bunch of books came out this week, but that's everything I read, and that was a lot of books, a lot of money. So thank you for watching me slowly go broke on comic books. Uh, come back next week for another episode of The Pull. Make sure you subscribe. For every new subscriber we get, I will fund one mission to the moon. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Now get out of here and go read comics.